Now, Europe. Um, because of the way land ownership has cropped up in the United Kingdom, it's common to think that the most concentrated land ownership in the world is in Scotland, and after that in South America. And both are wrong. The most concentrated land ownership, the largest amounts of land in the fewest hands, are in Spain. That's where you go. It's not true to say that 52 families own Spain, but 52 ducal families own 30% of Spain's agricultural land. So 52 families owning Spain, it's not too far off. Um, now, this, this has an enormous meaning, and I'll take you into it very briefly. There's a lot of noise about agricultural subsidy hurting the poor. Well, I'll show you how that happens, but you don't have to go to Africa to find it. But what's happening in Europe is extraordinary. The bulk, and you're talking about 48 billion a year, you're not talking about pennies. The bulk of that money goes to the richest people in Europe. It doesn't go to Fred Bloggs with his 200 acres down the road. Ultimately, in the form of enhanced rents, and in the form of enormous growth in the value of rural assets, it goes to the super rich. And that's true throughout Europe. The, in the United Kingdom, the direct subsidy is about 4 billion, and 1 billion of that goes to 2,148 farms, which are about 3,000, 4,000 acres. And most people are not conscious of this, but this is how the rural world is really structured, and this is why the subsidy is wrong. It doesn't go to those we, the taxpayer, believe it's going to. It goes to the super rich, and it makes them much, much richer. Right. If I could just stay with Europe just for a moment. There, now, there's another problem with Europe. The second problem is finding out who's getting the money. And the oddest thing is, I've had to use the United Kingdom as an example because our farming statistics enable you to work it out. You can actually work out from our statistics that there are 2,140 big farms that are getting most of the subsidy. You know, you, it doesn't, it's half an hour. Once our statistics get to Europe, they become completely mangled and you cannot actually work out ownership from the next level of statistics. All the stuff that identifies ownership vanishes. Now, think about that. It's very, very important. There's a concealment operation. I don't know whether it's conspiracy, stupidity, or just plain incompetence, but how Workable statistics, when they go up the chain, become totally unworkable, is beyond me. And the, the Eurostat statistics have a team of 750 people and cost 56 million to degrade the statistics the member countries are submitting. Uh, so now let me t t take you to how we use the subsidy as a weapon. <coughs> Those of you who remember European history will remember that or know that before World War II, Russia, Belarus, and the Ukraine were virtually the breadbasket of Europe. They produced most of the grain. Well, go to the Polish border, and you have a 200-acre farm on the Polish side, and it, owned by Jan, and on the 100 yards away on the, the Russian side, a 200-acre farm owned by Ivan. Right. Before... Before he even gets out of bed, Jan, who is now in the European Union, gets approximately 20,000 euros before he gets out of bed. If he does nothing, he still gets 20,000 euros. Ivan, on the other side of the border, 100 yards away, starts with his competitor, 20,000 euros ahead of him before he gets out of bed. So we're not damaging the third world we're damaging, you know, the developed world. And the subsidy is, subsidy is being used as a weapon to keep particularly those three countries from competing effectively. But 
there's another one of the fig one of the if you're in business one of the things you have to do is find out what your competition is doing obviously you know if somebody's selling a car for 100 quid cheaper than you you need to know it now the best statistics in the world for working out land ownership how much subsidy is going to who are those of the united states of america it's all there you can work it down to the last acre who's getting what but the united states has agricultural land of 930 million acres and it's got 2.2 million farms now think about this europe has 430 million acres and 11 million farms and there's a country called greece which is it's about one ninetieth the size of the United States, and it's got two thirds the number of farms as the United States. So, if competition means anything, you know the system in Europe is the economics of the loony bin plus. And I have kind of no ideological angle. I've just discovered these facts. It's extraordinary. The, but within with the United States farm structure has two hidden, which, two hidden things in it, which you can't find in the European statistics. In the American figures, you can find out that American farming is actually conducted, run, and all the production, and most of the subsidy, goes to 177,000 farms, quite a small number. In Europe, no country has farms that can compete like that. If you've got 6,000 acres, you're in a better position and a vast subsidy. You know, you're going to outshoot everybody. And, you know, 11 million window boxes. Is that, there are countries in Europe which are getting subsidy down to alleged farms that really are window boxes. They certainly can't be much bigger on the statistics. Right. We've already mentioned, sorry, I'm doing a bit of a flip because... <coughs> Land ownership systems tend to follow historic structures. And the biggest historic structure of all was the British Empire. But if I could sort of pause, which British Empire? Because I don't think there was one. I think there were several. And we can, when we get to the Q&A, we can perhaps go into this. The United Kingdom has retained 486 million acres of its empire which is quite a lot of land. The second thing is, amongst the 16 colonies are the 14 richest tax havens on Earth. So we may have lost a lot of the empire, may, but we have certainly kept the piggy bank. Most of the world's cash is in crown colonies. And when I say most, you're talking about 60% of all the world's free cash is in places like the Bahamas, Antigua, and so on. And they're all, the main ones anyway, are crown colonies. So we might have lost a lot of things. We didn't lose the piggy bank. We've got the, the loot. <laughs>